you found yourself looking around for help when you're using Excel or you're brand new to Excel, this is the perfect video for you. I'm going to tell you 25 must know things about Excel and a few bonus features at the end. And you're going to learn all of this in just nine minutes. As soon as you open Excel, this is what you're greeted with. The column on the left will show you a few features. The home button is what you're looking at. The new button will give you access to the blank workbook or even more templates. The recent button will show you your recent Excel files. The shared button will allow you to access shared Excel files. And the open button will allow you to open Excel files that are already saved in your system. Let's go back to home. And the most commonly used workbook would be the blank workbook. But if you prefer to work on a template that is already pre-prepared for you by Excel, by Microsoft, then you can go ahead and select one of these templates. Let's go back into blank workbook and open it up. A workbook is the entire Excel document that you're looking at on screen. It is different from a worksheet. A worksheet is this area right here and this is where you would be doing most of your work. Now you can have multiple worksheets inside a workbook and to access this, you can go down here to the bottom left corner and you can click on the plus icon to create multiple worksheets. You can also right click on the worksheet tab to delete a worksheet or you can right click on the tab to rename a worksheet. Now these blocks on your screen are called cells. Each cell has a cell address. The way you find the cell address is the column name plus the row number. So to get to this cell, as you can see, it's in the E column and it's on row number 11 and you can see up here that it is E11. If you need to jump to a different cell, you can either click on it or you can go to the cell up here and type O11 and it will go to O11. The top part where you can see A, B, C, these are called columns. You can also adjust the width of your column in a couple of different ways. Here's an example. As you can see, this sentence has exceeded the width of the line by a lot. So there are a couple of ways to adjust the column width. One is to click at the edge of your column and drag it across to the exact amount of width that you need. Or you can double click the exact same spot and it will auto adjust to the exact amount of width that is required to fit that line. You can also adjust the height of the row the exact same way. You can either drag it or you can double click to auto fit. This section where you see home, insert, draw, page layout, formula, data, review, view and all. This area is called the ribbon. Now almost all of the features of the Excel sheet can be accessed through the ribbon. For example, if you need to format the Excel sheet, most of that can be found in the home section. If you need to insert a pivot table or a picture or any such thing on your Excel sheet, you can find that in the insert tab. You can go into the draw tab to draw something in your Excel sheet. You can go to the page layout tab to change the layout of your Excel sheet. The formula tab will give you access to a lot of different formulas if you're not already familiar with them. The data tab will give you access to features like text to columns and so on. Now let's say I need to edit this sentence that I've just written. You have two options. And for example, I'm going to say, please, right? I can do that by just double clicking on the area or I can click on the formula bar up here. This area is called the formula bar. I can click on the formula bar and I can go ahead and edit whatever I need to. Speaking of the formula bar, there are a lot of different formulas that you can use in Excel to make your life easy. The way to start any formula is by typing the equal to sign. And equal to in essence works similar to how you would use equal to in your math class. So for example, this is cell number D9. And this cell number D9, I want to say is equal to cell number D7. And if I hit enter, it will bring the exact same information. But as you can see on the formula bar, it says equal to D7 and it doesn't look like this area on the formula bar where I've actually written the data. So if I delete this, the data from D9 becomes zero because there's nothing in D7. Likewise, let's say you have two numbers, two and three, and you need to add it up. All you have to do is equal to, select the first one, click on plus and select the second one. And there you have it. You have the sum of D6 and E6. Now let's get to formatting. If you need to change the font of your text, you can find it in the home section of your ribbon. You can change the font to anything you like. Likewise, right next to that, you can adjust the size of your font by either selecting this font size or you can do up or down on the font size buttons. You can also bold your text. You can italicize it 
or you can underline it right here. One of the fastest and easiest ways to impress your boss is to include borders on your text so that it looks much neater and much nicer when you send across your Excel sheets. You can change the color of your cells by clicking on the fill color button and you can change the color of your text by clicking on this button right here and changing it to whatever you like. Let's say that ABC are departments in a company and these two sections denote two different companies. This first company is called 123 and the second company is called 345. As you can see, this really doesn't look good and it doesn't really explain to the viewer what they are looking at. Even if you create a table by using the borders, it makes no sense. The way to overcome this is by using the merge feature. Select the data, click on merge in your home and likewise do the same. As you can see, it makes so much more sense and it is so much easier to understand. You can also change the alignment of the cells exactly the way you want in the home section on your ribbon. As an example, I've written a really long sentence here and you can see that it doesn't fit into the columns width. So how do you overcome this? As I said earlier, you can either change the size of the column or in some cases where you can't do that for various reasons, you can go ahead and click on the wrap text feature, which then brings it into the same cell, but it increases the number of lines where the text is displayed. Now, as you can see, I've added some data to this table. If you need to view some of the items specifically on this table, you can use the filter feature. You can select the data table and go into data and you can click on filter. This will give you a filter option. You can click on this arrow right here and click on manager to see all the manager items. You can go ahead and clear the filter by clicking on clear filter. You can also click on the date filter and you can filter it exactly the way you want. Now, one of the most important and most used features on Excel is the sum function and that is used to add up multiple numbers. Now, earlier I said that you can go equal to and you can add up by just clicking on plus, but you can imagine how difficult this is going to be to do if you use this feature in an Excel sheet where there are thousands and thousands of items. So all you have to do is type equal to sum and open the bracket and then you can select an entire range that you need to sum. Go ahead and close the bracket and hit enter and you'll have a sum of all of the numbers that you need to sum up. You can also see that the numbers in this column don't have a comma or a decimal point. To get this, all you have to do is go back to the home section, select the data where you need to change it and click on the comma button in the ribbon. You can increase or decrease the decimal points by clicking on these buttons. Or if you need to convert it into a percentage, you can do that as well. To give you more control over the formatting of your cells, you can click on the arrow right here and change it exactly the way you want. Now, if you need to add a column right before column C for a new field, then all you have to do is click on D, right click and say insert. You can now go ahead and do whatever you need to do in this column. If you have a column that you don't need anymore, likewise, right click and say delete. And it's a similar story for rows as well. You can right click and say insert or you can right click and say delete. You can always save your Excel sheet by clicking on Command S on Mac or Control S on PC. But I highly recommend using the auto save function on the top left corner of your Excel worksheet so that if you forget to save your Excel, Excel does the saving for you. If you want to learn more about the pivot table feature in the insert part of your ribbon, click on this video or check out this video for more Excel tutorials. If you found value from this video, please leave a like down below and subscribe. It really helps me out a lot. I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.